I will be graduating at the end of the semester, and one of the things that's going to make it so hard is that I'll have to leave such a wonderful group of people. One of these fantastic people is our next competitor. He makes our four-hour van rides a little more tolerable. Uh, he's always there to make us laugh, to make us cry, and to remind us that throwing Bob out of a vehicle at 80 miles per hour is a bad idea. <laughs> Now, he's chosen to transfer at the end of the year, which makes us all sad, because we're losing a real talent. But we know that wherever he goes, and whatever he does, he's going to be very successful, and we really can't wait to see what happens next. Performing a DI, performing a DI which is similar to a prose, but it's uh, adapted from a script that was written for the screen, or for the stage. Um, we, see, we see just how talented he is. This is Wesley Skim presenting, um, I'm not Batman. <laughs> uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not Batman, where he reminds us that he is not Batman, but he's pretty good at speech. <laughs> uh. It's the middle of the night, and the sky is glowing like mad radioactive red. And if you squint, you could just maybe see the moon through the thick layer of airplane exhaust and cigarette smoke that covers the whole city, like a mosquito net that won't let the angels in. And if you look up high enough, you could see me, standing on the edge of an 87-story building. And up there, a place for gargoyles and broken clock towers that have stayed still and dead for maybe like a hundred years. Up there is me, and I'm freaking Batman. <laughs> I Am Not Batman by Marco Ramirez is the story of a boy who comes to terms with his poverty by pretending he is the Cape Crusader. When fantasy and reality collide, however, he is met with the realization that I Am Not Batman by Marco Ramirez. I got Batmobiles and frickin' Batcaves like for real. <laughs> and then all it takes is a broom closet or a back room or a fire escape and Danny's hand-me-down jeans are gone. <laughs> and my navy blue polo shirt, the one that kind of looks good on me but has a hole in it near the back from when it got snagged on the fence behind Arturo's, that blue polo shirt, it's gone too. <laughs> and I get all like, transformational. <laughs> and nobody pulls out a belt and whips Batman for talking back. Or for not talking back. And nobody calls Batman simple, or stupid, or skinny. And nobody fires Batman's brother from the Eastern Taxi Company, neither, because they was making cutbacks. Because they got nothing but respect. And not like afraid respect, but like respect respect. Because when you're Batman, nobody's afraid of you. Because Batman don't mean nobody no harm, ever. Because all Batman really wants to do is save people, and maybe pay Abuela's bills someday, and die happy, and maybe get like made famous for real and kill the Joker. <laughs> Tonight, like most nights, I'm all alone, and I'm watching, and I'm waiting, like an eagle, or like a, no, yeah, like an eagle. <laughs> and my cape is flapping in the wind, cause it's freaking long. <laughs> and my pointy ears are on, and that mask that covers like half my face is on too. And I got like bulletproof stuff all up in my chest, so no one can hurt me, and nobody, nobody, is gonna come between Batman and justice. From where I am, I can hear everything. Somewhere in the city, there's an old lady picking up leftovers out of a trash can, and she's sticking a piece of sesame chicken that someone spit out into her own mouth. And somewhere, there's a man, a man in a janitor's uniform, stumbling home drunk and dizzy after spending half his paycheck on 21 ounce twist off bottles of beer, and the other half on a four hour visit to some lady's house on a street where all the lights have been shot out by people who'd rather do what they do in the city, in the dark. And half a block away from Janitor Man, there's a group of good-for-nothings who don't know no better, waiting to beat Janitor Man with rusted bicycle chains and imitation Louisville sluggers. And if they don't find a cent on him, which they won't, they'll just pound at him till the arms till their arms start burning, till there's no more teeth left to crack out. But they don't count on me. They don't count on no dark night with a stomach full of grocery store brand macaroni and cheese and cut up Vienna sausages. 
because they'd rather believe I don't exist. And from 87 stories up, I could hear one of the good for nothing say, give me the cash, real fast like that. Just give me the cash. <laughs> and I hear a janitor man mumble something in a drunk language and turn pale. So I swoop down like mad best. And I'm like darkness and I'm like swoosh. And I take a battering and I get the light bulb broken. And someone's like, who just turned out the lights? <laughs> What's that over there? Give me what you got, old man. Did anybody hear that? No, really, there ain't no bat. But then, one out of three good for nothings gets it to the eye. And number two swings blindly into the cape before him. But before he can hit anything, I grab a trash can and then bam, right in the gut. And number one comes back with a jump kick, but I know judo karate, so I'm like, crash! <laughs> but before I could do any more damage, we all hear a click, click. And suddenly, everything gets quiet. And the one good for nothing left standing grips a handgun and aims straight up like he's holding Jesus hostage. And the good for nothing who got it to the head, who tried to jump kick me, and the other good for nothing who got into the gut, is both scrambling back away from the dark figure before him. And the drunk man, the janitor man, is huddled in a corner, praying to St. Anthony, because that's the only one he could remember. <laughs> and there's me, eyes glowing white, cape blowing softly in the wind, bulletproof chest heaving. My heart beating right through it in Morse code for fuck with me just once. Come on, try. <laughs> and the one good for nothing left standing, the one with the handgun, he lowers his arm and he points it straight at me and aims straight in between my pointy ears like goalposts and he's special teams. And Janitor Man is still calling St. Anthony, but he ain't picking up. And for a second, it seems like maybe I'm going to lose. Nah. <laughs> shoo, shoo, fah. Don't kill me, man. Snap, wrist, crap, neck, slice, skin, meats, acid. Ah! And he's on the floor, and I'm standing over him. And I got the gun in my hands now. And I hate guns. I hate holding them, because I'm Batman. And that man don't like guns, because his parents were iced by guns a long time ago. But for just a second, my eyes glow white, and I hold this thing, for I could speak to the good for nothing in a language maybe he understands. Click, click. And the good for nothings become good for dis disappearing into whatever toxic waste shithole they crawled out of. And it's just me and Janitor Man. And I pick him up, and I wipe sweat and cheap perfume off his forehead. And he begs me not to hurt him. And I grab him tight by his janitor man shirt collar. And I pull him to my face. And he's taller than me, but the cape helps. <laughs> so he listens when I say two words to him. Go home. And he does, checking behind his shoulder every 10 feet. And I swoosh from building to building on his way there. Because I know where he lives. And I watch his hands tremble as he pulls out a keychain and opens the door to his building. And I'm back in bed before he walks through the front door. And I hear him turn on the faucet and pour himself a glass of warm tap water. And he puts the glass back in the sink. And I hear his footsteps. Boom. Boom. They get closer as they get closer to my room. Boom. He creaks my door open like... Mad slow. <laughs> and he takes a step in, which he never does. And he's staring off into nowhere, his face the color of sidewalks in summer. And I act like I'm just waking up and I say, What's up, Pop? And Janitor Man says nothing to me. But I see in the dark, I see his arms go limp, and his head turns like towards me. And he lifts it. For I could see his face. For I could see his eyes. And his cheeks is dripping, but not with sweat. And he just stands there, breathing. Like he remembers my eyes glowing white. Like he remembers my bulletproof chest. Like he remembers he's my pop. 
And for a long time, I don't say nothing. And he turns around, hand on the doorknob, and I hear him mumble two words to me. I'm sorry. And I lean over and I open my window just a crack. If you look up high enough, you could see me. And from where I am, I could hear everything. 